but through this process of breaking belief systems within the body of Christ, Christians that are struggling with these things in, com in combination with circumstances of their life story. So you have your life story, which comes with its own beef, comes with its own stuff that we have to deal with, Bible study, through counseling, through marriage counseling, all those things. What doesn't typically get covered within the body of Christ is when we start getting in the realm of money, which 90 plus percent of your decisions are, are made from, and on top of not talking about it, there's these belief systems that even crush the opportunity for you to become successful in the body of Christ. And that's what we've been dealing with today. And I'm going to kind of lead you guys to some action steps coming out of this masterclass that we've been having together. So the final part here that I've had Christians use on me, not me personally, maybe sometimes personally, but when I encourage a multiplication mindset to them, for example, I will use the word 10x. How can we 10x what you're doing. How can we 10x your income? How can we 10x your production? Immediately, if I'm talking to a Christian, non-believer, they're like, this is amazing. Like, I, I, I never would have thought of that. I'm like, yeah, even if you fail miserably, if you were thinking 10x and you failed miserably in 3x, that's more than your original goal was. And now you're in a place where you're, you're, you've got way more to cover your cost of living and you can start thinking very, very clearly now. Even if we never 10x, it was the concept of thinking big in multiplication. That's how God's kingdom works. Genesis 128, that formula. There's multiplication in the formula, not necessarily growth. So I always talk about that with them, but I'm immediately head with this word, Travis, called contentment, mm. um, and which I understand where they're coming from. I haven't done the best job conveying and I'm, I'm wondering if you can help me here, uh, what that truly means to be content in the kingdom, what it doesn't mean when someone tries to use contentment to block, to block their ability to go and do what God blessed them to do. For example, let's say we're dealing with someone that's a math genius and they have an idea that could save people tons of money in the, um, in the green industry, you know, solar and electricity, and, and if they would put the formulas together and present it to a company and they would pay them millions of dollars to, to work in that organization, but they're sticking to um, being a professor at college, at a college, or they're, or they're staying at this teacher's position knowing that they have an amazing idea that could be worth millions of dollars, but as a Christian, they need to be content mm -hmm. um, with what they have. They have a good job, good career, good marriage, you know, one mortgage, you know, no debt outside of the mortgage and good credit and, you know, savings in the bank and they're tithing 10% and, you know, all this stuff. Yeah, it's a great, you don't know this, but I just recorded a video on this topic called uh, uh, Content Versus Satisfied. You got to know the difference. That's coming out soon. Shameless plug. But uh, I've got the, I've got the, I've got some of my notes right here um, from this video. It is actually... I'm studying it myself because I had some of these questions because there are scriptures that talk about being content. And I wanted to make sure I understood for myself, this is the pattern. I want to make sure I get it for me and then Before. I'm going to go teach it. Yeah. Yeah. So I had questions. I did my own research. I hopped in the word. I studied this stuff out and now I can help you guys because it is a great, this is a great question. I'm so glad you're bringing all these up. So, Contentment, here's what it means. I'm, I'm just gonna read it to you if you don't mind, just cause I got yes. it right here. Yeah, it's, it's worded. Contentment as described in the Bible is a state of being satisfied with what one has regardless of the external circumstances. All right, so listen to this part though. It involves an inner peace and satisfaction that comes from trusting God's provision and being grateful for his blessings. Satisfied, and this is important to know both, it refers to the fulfillment of a desire or need. So a contentment is I'm happy and I have inner peace just as we are, just as I am with whatever's going on, uh, with whatever my money's doing, with whatever my job's doing, et cetera, the business. I'm content, I'm happy, I have inner peace, I trust God, I'm good to go. Satisfied is like when the actual external thing happens. But here's the problem, and here's here's why this is important. Contentment is a deeper inner state of being satisfied with what one has, rooted by trusting God's provision. While satisfaction often re refers to the fulfillment of an immediate need or desire, contentment transcends fleeting moments of satisfaction. So you can be satisfied, but it's going to go away. It's temporary. You just Content, made your first million. Okay. Yeah. Went it was away. good for a second. 
-hmm. feels good for a second. But contentment's like, man, I'm thrilled with my life even if I never made the million. Right. Now, what's happening is I think people are using that word out of context. So the, the person you just described, he's actually describing a fear. And it's more likely a fear of many Christians are very afraid and they have all of these things that what they think pridefulness is. I don't need that. I don't need to make all that money. Why would I do that? I'm happy with what I got here. Great. I'm happy with what I have too. There's nothing wrong with wanting to increase. There is nothing wrong because they're major, original marching orders. Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. That's grow and expand, subdue and dominate. Okay, that's the original marching orders. If if the guy in your example really doesn't want to go do that stuff and just it's not a desire of his heart, great. But I think most of the people do have that desire for growth, for increase, going to the next level. But I'm afraid of something. I'm afraid if it works, I'll become greedy and evil. I'm yep. afraid if it works, I'll become prideful, selfish, and arrogant. I'm afraid if it works, I might have to work more hours. I might have to have a big old team. I don't want to run a corporation. Now, they don't say this stuff, but it's all subconscious. It's what's going on back here. It just manifests itself as, well, I just need to be content. Let me go, let me go throw my Christian excuse so that you'll back off a little bit and I don't have to think about it. Mm -hmm. That's actually most likely what happens in those scenarios. Yeah. And uh, being, I just struggle with being able to communicate uh, when I'm on the call with someone. I kind of don't press initially. Interesting. Okay. So what you're saying is you want to get out of debt and you want to leave wealth behind for your, all your kids and your family, and you want to leave assets behind, but you're trying to do it off this current operating system, this current mindset. And I just don't know how we get there. Like even as a, as a, as a coach, I'm, I'm trying to get you to another level. You're, you're using your your Christian version of contentment to block us mm -hmm. from having the possibility that you could actually be really good at this and you would actually through systems and standard operating procedures actually give yourself more time than what you have today uh, yeah. in your life to spend with family because now you've got the resources to do those things but you're throwing this contentment at me and that's just some sometimes I get real blocked up on that I'm like I just yeah. kind of quiet <laughs> uh, yeah and, and that's really what it is. It's like, okay, Mr. Client, what are you really afraid of? And just let them talk, see what they say. Because it's something, like, what you're trying to do, you know this, but you're trying to get to the real root of what's actually happening here. Correct. Because that, him, him just being, I gotta be content, he hasn't lived that out for every step of his life. If he's a professor at a college or whatever his, his job is, he had a position before that. Hey, we wanna promote you to manager. Oh, no, I just need to be content. Hey. Uh, we want to have your wife's like, Hey, I want to have another kid. Now I need to be discontent with the one I got. It's like, no, you don't operate that way. So there's obviously something else that's blocking you right now. Mm -hmm. What are you really afraid of? Yeah. And I can, I can speak just for myself. Like I'm at a point now where I'm getting, I'm getting to a point where I have to consider, do I want to scale team of people that I have around me? Do I want to multiply this channel is this what i truly desire and i'm you know wrestling back and forth with 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 god on it my my i'm talking to god i'm not wrestling with god i'm just talking to god on hey do you need me to you know keep working in this area are you trying to push me into this opportunity here that could just blow my business up in the next you know couple months what are you doing all right i'm someone that needs to kind of just have the plan and i'm and i'm a, I'm a soldier i just go and do it uh but when someone you know, you start asking me to think and dream to this to the degree that I know God can have me uh, dream and or the visions that He gives me, and it creates a fear of success. So I know there's clients that I work with that where we experience the same thing, where it's like, oh yeah, you, you're you're fearing that you actually could win big uh, and help a lot of people. That's what you really fear. It's not losing. I actually don't fear losing anymore because I've already been to what losing looks like. So I'm like, you know, th th that's what I know. But what I don't know is winning at the yeah. highest level. And that's even scarier than taking five steps back, conserving, spending less, going out less. It's like, that doesn't even hurt me. But it's winning at the highest level and eating at the highest places and meeting with the highest people in certain places. That's the real, real scary stuff. And I think a lot of people watching, Christians especially, where it's like, you're just staying in the pews instead of getting on stage, instead of building your platform, instead of 
spreading the good news mm -hmm. at a level of scale, leveraging technology and leveraging resources that allow us to do that today at speeds of which we've never seen before.